Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're gonna do the Floral Beauty Throw. This is using Red Heart Super Saver and this is the stripes version where the colors that you see are coming exactly out of the ball as you see it. So if you wanna control your colors you can do so but this is just using one strand and letting the colors just go out on their own. I'm gonna be addressing a problem in this pattern that I think that you can change and that's completely improvisation based on my own experience. I'm gonna share that with you and without further ado let's just dive harder into this pattern. So this square is made up of a total of 12 rounds that you see and it has all the instructions and I just check it off as I go. So let's take a look at closer at the square. So you're going to notice that the square doesn't really look that square does it? So I'm gonna be addressing an issue and it's gonna be in the second last round. So round number uh, tw uh, 11 I'm going to give you a different solution than what you see here. I'm gonna teach it like round 11 here in the pattern just to honor the designer's wishes. But I'm going to change the shape just slightly here is so that it looks more square. So you can block this in this center piece even though it's round when you do it, it ends up turning into like a, a square blocking of, flower, of flowers just like you see. So I did a total of three of these and I'm gonna do the fourth here. I'm also gonna teach how to join them today and also just cover your border. So we're gonna be using a five and a half millimeter size eye crochet hook and you can use whatever yarn that you wish. Uh, Red Heart Super Saver is obviously the yarn of choice for this particular one. So this is an intermediate level so some stuff I'm going to assume that you know and without further ado <laughs> for again let's begin. To get started we're going to make an adjustable loop which is also known as a magic ring. So take in the end and we also have slower tutorials just on this alone. Just put it into your hand and just put out two fingers and wrap that yarn and when it crosses over top of your two fingers like this you wanna cross it over so it's crossed. You're going to stick your hook underneath the one strand and pull up the other and then just pinch this so this, this one here belongs to the outside of that ring. I'm gonna show it one more time. Again there's slower tutorials just available for this. So you just wanna put it in front of your hand, two fingers. When you wrap you're gonna come up and over and then just use your other fingers to hold it. Slip the hook underneath this strand here and pull. And when you grab it just take your fingers out and just grab those two, the ring and the string. So you, when you go to crochet you're gonna crochet over both of these so that you can pull it shut. You're going to chain a total of three which will count as a first double crochet. So one, two and three and continuing to go and when you do this make sure you do go over that second strand is that you're just gonna double crochet 11 or 17 more times. So with the chaining of three and the 17 double crochet that gives you a total count of 18. So you're just gonna do that. So let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So do verify that you have that. It's important. So make sure you did go over the two strands. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Once you're satisfied just pull up a, a large loop and just that other strand that's holding out just pull on it and it will pull everything nice and tight into the center. And you can only pull so far before you can't pull anymore. So once you're satisfied you have to get a tapestry needle at this point and secure this loose end. So if you just cut it now it'll fall out. So just putting in a tapestry needle and you're just going to drag it across. So you see that it's coming from this direction. So continuing to go in that direction once. Go back. That's the second time and go back a third time. Third time is a charm and then you can safely cut that out and round number one is complete. So check that off in your list. Put this loop back on the hook and when you're ready just slip stitch to the first one and that will complete round number one. Let's begin round number two. So it starts off with the back post slip stitch. I've never seen that abbreviation before so that's new. So what I want to do is that see these posts? These are each a post. So to do the first one you're going to slip stitch. So just move the hook back 
and slip in behind the chain um, three as the first one and just go into the back and stay in the back and pull through and through. So you've just slip stitched on the back post. And now what you have to do is chain one and in the same post you wanna do a back post double crochet. So wrap in the hook around the same post and then just do a double crochet. Then what you have to do is that you have to chain one so it can grow out properly and then move to the next post that you have and do a pack post double crochet. And then chain one and then move to the next post and I want you to do that all the way around. This is round number two and just make sure you chain one in between those and you will see it emerging right before your eyes. So I'm just doing my last back post double crochet. Make sure that you do chain one after it and then just join it to the top of the first back post double crochet. I've already counted off camera. There is a confirmed total of 18 back post double crochet. So the first one looks a little bit awkward because it's got that chain one in there but it's not a deal breaker and I don't think it's that noticeable once you have everything said and done. Let's move on to round number three. We're gonna do exactly the same thing again but we're gonna change the chain count. So just do a back post slip stitch. So just coming from the back, grab that back post double crochet and just pull through and through. Chain one and then around the same post you're going to do a real back post double crochet. Like that. You're now going to chain two and then coming to the next back uh, post do a back post double crochet. So the only difference between this round and the last is that you're chaining two in between each so that it can continue to grow out properly. Please do this all the way around. This is round number three. Once you get all the way back around make sure you are chaining two and then joining it to the first back post double crochet. Let's move on to round number four. We're going to chain one and immediately jump to the next chain two space and place in three single crochets. So one, two and three and you're gonna do that all the way around. So the next chain two space put in three single crochets. So one, two and three. Please do that all the way around. This is round number four. Coming up to the end of number four, there's three in the last space here. Just join it to the first one. First single crochet with a slip stitch. Let's begin round number five. Easy round, chain one and place in one single crochet into each of the stitches all the way around. So one single crochet in each, round number five. So I'm coming all the way around for round number five. In round number six we're just about to start so just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. So we're going to do what is called as a front post um, DC cluster. So it's a double crochet front post cluster. So we're gonna use each one of these posts and see how it's thicker than normal. It'll, it, it'll be hidden, trust me. So we're going to begin and we're gonna chain up one and we're gonna treat the first one here as a front post um, cluster. So wrap in the hook going around the post, pulling through, pull it through two and hold and you're gonna do that a total of three times. So wrap around the post, pull through, pull through two and hold. Wrap and into the post, pull through, pull through two and hold. You'll have four loops, pull through all four, just like that. So that counts as that stitch. So if you have followed these all the way up, there's three single crochets essentially that we have that's going to be behind here. So this counts as the first one. So we're going to single crochet in the next two. So if you look at where this is, see these two? That's where you're gonna single crochet. So that's where you're gonna start. Once you start where you're single crocheting it makes sense. So now the next one is a front post cluster around the next. So then three times. So once, twice and three times. Pull through all four loops. So that counts as that one stitch behind. So the next two are single crochet and you should end up see just to the side of this one here. And then it's a front post cluster. Once, twice, three times, pull through all four. That counts as that one behind and then just do the next two and you should end up just to the one side of that. See, it's always the same. Please do this all the way around. This is round number six. I'm coming up all the way around just doing the last front post cluster and then you just have to do the two last single crochets and then just join it to the next front post cluster there. Okay, so that is round number six. 
Round number seven, we're now going to do it a little bit of an expansion round. So just chain up one and in the tops of these clusters you're gonna put two single crochets. So one and two and then the next two are just uh, one single crochet in each. So one and two. So the expansion's happening on the top of these clusters. So just put two into the next one and then two and then one by itself for the next two and then two in the next cluster and etc. Do this round number seven. So if it's starting to buckle on you, don't worry about it. It's part of the charm. So it will settle down. So the last two are one single crochet by itself and then you'll join it to the first one a single crochet that you started with. So round number eight, we're gonna create some spaces to create the flower petal look. So to do that, you're gonna chain up one and single crochet in the first and then chain four. So one, two, three, four. Skip only three stitches. So one, two, three, go to the fourth. If you want a reference point, it's the first one of the two that are in the same stitch if you wanna see that visually. So one, two, three, four and skip three, one, two, three. It's the first one of the grouping of two. Please do this all the way around, round number eight. So I'm coming all the way back around and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet. So round number nine, we're gonna create some petals. To do this, we are going to slip stitch into the first chain four space. So slip over, chain one and single crochet into the same one. You're then going to jump to the next space and apply eight double crochets. So let's do that. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then just jump to the next space here single crochet and then jump to the next space and do eight again. So let's do eight. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then just jump to the next space, single crochet in. Please do that all the way around, round number eight. Or sorry, this is round number nine. I just come up to the end of round number nine and I got my eight in here and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet and then begin round number ten. Round number ten, we're going to do exactly what we did right in the very beginning here to create the layering effect. To do this, we want to do a back post a slip stitch around the first double crochet, it's over, it's over here. So don't mistake this chain that's coming up where the single crochet is sitting in as a stitch because it's not. So you're just gonna slip stitch to the first back post to get started, chain one and then do one double crochet back post around the same one. So now that the first one's in, you're gonna chain one and then you're gonna come into the next one and you're gonna do a back post, double crochet, chain one and then the next one. So you're only worrying about these double crochets. So skip over the singles. So you'll do the last one here on this side, chain one and then you'll do the back post uh, double crochet on this one, the first one of the grouping of eight and you'll do that all the way around and this is round number ten. So when you get all the way back around, you just chain one and then you're just going to join to the first back post double crochet. So what I'm about to show you is exactly what's in the pattern. So round number um, 11. So I'm also going to show you an alternative round. So let me explain the difference between the two. As an occasional designer, I'm used to doing round circles to a square and what you notice is that when you get to a square, for example, you'll notice that you have to fill in the corner spaces. So like this. So it has to be brought out larger here in the corners and then really more narrow here in the middle. So what I noticed with this pattern is that the next round that we're about to do is that it's all double crochets all the way around except for in the corners there's a double crochet, chain three, double crochet. And what happens with that is that it ends up looking more like this. So you can see it's kind of bulging. And so you can block it. So damp block it if you wish. You can do that. So I'm going to teach it the way that it's designed. But the alternative way is that what I would do if it were me is that I would change the way that it's looking on the sides. So when you do a corner for example, I would do trebles instead. So treble, chain three, treble. And so the next 17 stitches that you have, I would do one treble, two doubles, two halves, seven singles, two halves, two doubles, one treble 
and then the corner again of treble, chain three, treble. And what that will do is it'll build it out on the ends here where you need to and be more narrow here. Now I have not actually done this on the sample yet but this is what I would do if it were me and I were you. So let's uh, just teach it the way that it's meant to be and then I will teach it this way as well. So let's do version one. So in version one we're going to slip stitch to the next chain one space to begin and that's where you're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. Now in the spaces only is where you're going to play and you're just gonna jump into the next one. So just double crochet. So with the chaining the three and the double crochet you need a total of 17 stitches before the corner. So let's just count those out together. So we now officially have two and then three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. So you have 17 in here. So you can kind of see how it's bulging out a bit, right? So now the next one is going to be a corner. So you're just gonna do a double crochet, chain three, and double crochet in the same spot. So the next 17 is going to be a double crochet and you're gonna keep continue to do that all the way around. So just start off and then on the, so you do 17 and then the next one will be a corner and then 17 and the next one will be a corner and I'll meet you at the end of this round. I'll show you how to finish and then I'm gonna frog this and show you my alternative method. So I'm coming to the last space here. This is actually the corner so it's um, a double crochet, chain three, double crochet and where we started was in the next space. You can see that and you're just going to be, uh, slip stitch to the top of that. So that's how it looks. So you see how it kind of looks really kind of roughly? So that's because it's trying to fight its way through the sides. Yes you can wet block it so you just wanna damp it maybe with the spray bottle and then just kind of pull it out and then the next round is just single crochets and uh, just three single crochet in the corner which I will demonstrate. But what I want to show you is my alternative uh, method. So you see how it naturally wants to pucker in like this? So why not make the stitch work smaller there where that wants to happen so there's not gonna be so much of a pucker. So let's uh, begin to do that next. So let's frog this out and let's show you a second option. So here is the second option. So what I would do, I don't know if you can see that but I would start here like it does in the other pattern. So chain four equals a treble. So do that and then two doubles, two halves, seven singles, two halves, two doubles, one treble and then you'll have your corner of a treble, chain three, treble and you'll do that all the way around. When you come back all the way around you'll finish with this final corner with the treble, chain three, treble. Let's try this and see how it looks. So let's begin. We're going to slip stitch to the next chain one space like we did before and chain four. So there's your first treble. So one, two, three, four. In the next space then you're gonna put two doubles in a row. So one and two and then two halves in a row. So one and two and then two singles or sorry seven singles in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And so now we're gonna get bigger again. So two halves. So one and two. Two doubles. So one and two. And then a treble. So wrap the hook twice. And then the next one will be your corner. So it'll be a treble. Chain three and treble. That looks so much better. So let's try again one more side. So the first one will be a treble. So one and then the next two are treble, are, are doubles. So one and two. The next two are halves. So one and two and then seven singles in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then get bigger again. So two halves one and two, two doubles, one and two, one treble and then the next one is a new corner. 
So it's gonna be a treble, chain three, and treble. So if this is what appeals to you more, you can see when you look at it from this perspective, it's much closer than it will look as if you don't do that. It's completely different, it's, it's almost flatter. So we got one more round to do after that, which you will see that it will probably flatten off even more. Continue to do this one if you wish to do this one. If not, just continue the other way and I'll see you in the next round. When you get to the last space, it'll be a corner. So treble, chain three and treble. And then you just join it to the first treble that you had. So this is what it will look like if you do it the alternative way. So you can see it's a lot more square. And so the next round is just going to be a single crochet round. So I'm gonna leave the square. I'm gonna put it part as the project. You'll see it later. But you're just gonna chain up one and you're just gonna put in one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. Except for the corners. The corners uh, chain three spaces. You'll put in three single crochet and then that'll conclude off these squares. So you'll see that this one here the single crochet will help bring it back in balance and it's a join as you go technique if you wish. If you want to sew it the pr uh, squares directly together you can do so as well. But we will teach the, the join as you go as well. So you can see looks pretty good right? So continue this all the way around and let's uh, conclude off these squares and you can get as many as you wish. Done. When you get all the way back around just slip stitch to the first single crochet that you started with and then that's it. So I would be inclined to um, damp block these squares as you go or right at the end before you start attaching. I'm not going to do it today but um, it would actually help you probably uh, eye up the stitches even better when you're going to line everything up. So um, I, I have a steamer so I would just steam this thing and then just let it sit. And so you wanna pull it out on the corners and etc. So let's just back out. So you can see the difference between my version and that version. It's significant isn't it? So I'm not saying I'm right. I'm just saying that it's a choice. So let's uh, begin and move on. So if you're, what I would do though is make up your mind. Do you want this or that? Because when you have those coming together when it's like this it's gonna be a different completely monster versus putting something like this that's more flat. Up to you. Let's uh, begin doing the joining. So let's begin the joining technique. It's a join as you go kind of concept and what we do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna join and then we'll add the next one and the next one and the next one. What I would recommend is that you do the next layer up then join the next one coming up and going all the way across. Go all the way across. Include all of them and then at the end of that I would turn it then because these will be joined and then I would do all the ones going in the other direction. That's what I would do if I were you and you were me. So what we wanna do is a join as you go technique and again using the same yarn and it's a matter of just understanding where you wanna be. So you're going to go into the first stitch. So keeping the right sides facing up. Let's just get you a little closer and let's begin. So I've already joined it in. Just chain one and just single crochet in the first one and then in order to move on to the next one is that we're gonna chain one and we're gonna go into the corner one. So remember that there's three and go into the third one. So kind of keep them so both sides are facing up and you're gonna single crochet there. Now you're gonna chain up one and you're gonna skip one on this first square here. Let's just get that straggler out of the way. Go to the second and then chain one and then back up here you wanna skip the next one and just go single crochet. Chain one. So you skip the next one, single crochet in the next. Chain one and then back up here skipping one and single crochet in the next. And what you're doing is you're doing a joining technique as you're going. So chain one and down. So you're just essentially just skipping each or every other stitch on each side of the squares. So you eventually hit to the joining and then I'll see you there in, in just a moment. So I'm just coming up to the final uh, corner one. So single crochet, chain one and then finally coming to the final corner one down here. And honestly just be consistent. So if you think you're wrong just be consistent and you'll see that the joining is here right across. Now you wanna add your next one in. Okay so if you finish down here your next one is gonna be right here. So you just put your next one up. Go right into the corner of that one. Chain one and then corner of this one. chain one, 
skip one up here, chain one, skip, skip one down here. Please do this all the way across continuing to add them across and then essentially these will all be joined in this direction and then I would do all of them as I said and then turn the whole afghan and then do the other direction just like so. So see you at the end of the, the cross over here. So once you get to the end you're just gonna fasten off and weave in your ends. Okay so then you'll do all those sequentially. Then you'll turn your afghan and then attach in the other direction going across starting at the same way just right in the corners and you'll see it all comes together quite beautifully. So let's uh, do that. I'll leave that with you and then I'll be back and then we'll start our border. I might as well capture this in real time. So as I'm just working my way across even though they're joined in this direction I'm just pretending that they're not and just just treating it like it's just going all across. So I just jumping over the join and just come out to the other side and then coming back. So I just go right over top of that join. So if you really look at the join you'll see that this one is over top of the other. So just continue to do that and it looks pretty good too. So now that I've joined it and you will have obviously more but then you can see that it wants to puzzle together perfectly uh, in the center. It's just the outsides that bulge and if that bothers you then do the second method like I showed you. I would also then block this afterward. So we're going to begin the rounds, uh, three rounds for the border and keeping the right side up we are going to then just work our way across and let's determine how we're gonna do that. So let's show you round one of the border. You can attach anywhere that you wish. I just might as well attach right into the corner. So you got the three. Just go right into the corner one and attach and chain two which will count as a half double crochet and then two more half double crochets in there. So each of the corner spots stitches will have three half double crochets. You're then just going to match each one of these half double crochets to the stitch. Here's the trick. The space before the join and the space after has two half double crochets. Don't forget the where it's attached as well. That's also half double crochet. So I'll show you a little uh, trick when we get there. So just continue to go across and then I'll see you on the join in, a moment, in just a moment. So I'm coming up to the join spot. I have a loose tail I gotta take care of there. And this is the one where you can see where it's joining. So you want a half double crochet there. In the space here you want to apply two half double crochets. You could apply one right to the middle section here or just jump to the other side immediately in half double crochet and then start in the first one out. Here's the trick. What I would recommend to you is lay this afghan down at this moment. So just do a few more half double crochet and determine whether you think it's enough. Okay so the counting is not important. It's a, ma it's a matter of making it look right. So does it look right to you? It will uh, punch in a little bit. You see that on the main sample itself. So it will do that. So that's looking right. So if it's really punching in like this it means that there's not enough stitches and if you, if it's starting to buckle up towards you it's still laying flat at this moment then you know that um, it's too many stitches. So make that judgment call on the first one and then every time you pass the, the join do the same thing and then remember in the corners the middle one is gonna have three half double crochets and then turn and then continue along down the other sides. Continue this all the way around round number one. Let's move along to round number two and just finishing up and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first chain two that I started with. So the corners are gonna be slightly different. We're gonna do a back post double crochet or sorry half double crochet back post but we have to start off first. So here's what I wanna explain with the corners. The corners have three stitches in them. So we have to make sure when we're turning it that we're putting a chain one in between them when we're going to do that. So watch what we're going to do. Ch chain or sorry you wanna slip stitch to the chain two so back post slip stitch. Okay and then what we want to do is just chain one and then do a back post half double crochet around the same. So just going around the same pull through and then pull through all three loops. So because this is a corner you wanna chain one for the next one and then do the next one. So you're just applying a chain one in between them so that you can turn accurately. and then chain one and do the third one of the grouping of three. That only happens in the corners. Then 
the rest of these then all the way across are just back post half double crochet and then you'll end up hitting the the corner stitch uh, stitches again. The three the first one's a back post half double crochet chain one. Second one's a back post half double crochet chain one and the third one's a back post half double crochet and then you can just carry on. Please do this all the way around for round number two. So let's come all the way back around here. This is round number two and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the first back post double crochet. So round number three is the final round. We're gonna chain up one. Every single, every stitch is going to get a single crochet including the chain one spaces that you have in the corner. Make sure that you do honor those. So it's one single crochet in each of the stitches and chain one spaces as you're going all the way around. So continue this and this is the final round. I'll see you back here in a moment. What I'm going to do with myself is that I'm gonna finish off and then I'm gonna block this with a steamer and see what it looks like and then I'll post a photo on our website if you would like to see it actually once it's blocked because now you could just kinda see it here. So I'll see you at the end of this round. So when you get all the way back around just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet you are going to want to throw it in a tapestry needle. When I started crochet a long time ago um, I would never use a tapestry needle for anything and really ultimately these tails fall out if you don't put them in. So as much as people say you can just weave it in and get away with it, not always the case especially on the final round. So anything that you need to weave in now is your time to do it. So when you just go in just stay on the back side so don't interfere and just go through once. and then come back in the other direction twice. Essentially it's three times as a charm I always say. And then third time. It's funny when the camera's not on I still say that to myself. So we're now gone back and forth three times. You can cut it right into the project and then that will never fall out. And then what I'm gonna do at this point let's just back you and check my work here. So I have four squares done and uh, so you can kind of see it's not sitting flat at all. So what I wanna do is just dampen it up a little bit. I can use a wet um, idea. So can you tell which square is the original one that I altered? It's right here. Do you see that it's sitting flat? The others are not. So um, I don't know if you can see that from your particular angle. So I would really consider my alteration for that but then that's up to you. And then just take a, just dampen it up maybe with a spray bottle, lay it flat, pull uh, out your corners and etc. and you're good to go. Have a good one and we hope to see you again right here on the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at yarnspirations.com.